Welcome. I call to order the public hearing pursuant to ARS 15-905 of the Cave Creek Unified School District Number 93 Governing Board. It's Monday, June 27, 2022, and it's 6 o'clock. 1.2 public comments. The public hearing is being held to receive comments from the public on the adoption of the 2022-2023 budget. And there are no comments, obviously. So 1.3, adjournment of the public hearing. Is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The public hearing is adjourned. Item 2.1, call to order. I call to order the work study special meeting of the Cave Creek Unified School District Number 93 Governing Board. It's Monday, June 27, 2022, and it is still 6 o'clock p.m. 2.2, <laughs> roll call. All five board members are present and there is a quorum. Cabinet, member present, cabinet members present are Dr. Monroe and Ms. Rodriguez from HR, Ms. Sheila Sorensen. Absent are Nancy Diab Scott and Dr. Jensen. 2.3, formal adopt, adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Okay, a motion's been made to adopt the agenda as uh, presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The agenda is adopted as presented. 2.4, call to fill out forms for call to the public. Again, uh, there's no one here. Uh, 2.5, Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, visible with liberty and justice. Number three, presentation of awards for schools and departments. There are none. Uh, 4.1, call to the public. There are none. 5.1, pro statement presentation presented by Ms. Marcy Rodriguez. Go ahead, Marcy. You can take this one. Sorry, that probably should have been my name, but. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board. Um, this evening, we have. Um, put the pro statement back in front of the board. We brought this to you a couple of weeks ago to review um, and have discussion regarding how you would like the pro statement to read in the um, override pamphlet. You had a few um, recommendations and changes that you would like us to make. We've made those recommendations and changes to the statement. So we're bringing it back to you one more time to do another um, review discussion um, if there are any other changes that you'd like to see made to this and then at our next meeting in July we will bring this back to you as a resolution and you will formally adopt the statement for the pamphlet okay um, are there comments as to the changes the modifications that have been made it seemed like they everything got changed the way that they, we were talking about. So uh, right now, I, I think it looks pretty good. I was I was satisfied with it. I, I just had a couple little things in the middle of paragraph one, where it begins. It's proven um, that sentence uses community twice. So um, I mean, it's no big deal. Uh, but I changed one of the communities, the first one I changed to populous or a synonym for community. Uh, in the second paragraph, um, a yes vote will also provide. Then down in the middle of that paragraph, the funds will also expand. I just don't know that the word also is necessary. Again, these are no big deal. It's not meaning changes, just words. Other than that, I liked it. However, President Hatcher, when you got 200 work, words to work under, it does become significant. So we can we can take a look at that. I don't know what the final word count was, but Marcy and I were massaging it to make sure it might have been 196, 198. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No. I think for your your double use of the word also, I think we could just drop the first also out of that sentence. It still reads. Uh, it's still getting the message across. Mm -hmm. Agree. Not that it's exact same words, but the sentence that starts with highly effective teachers, 
are essential to high quality education. It's sort of another repetitive word. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you have yours? Are we good with that? The last sentence there in the, in the first paragraph, this override is critical to compete with other districts. I mean, it's more of a statement. Crucial than critical? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I, I, I mean, I understand what we're doing with it, but somebody that's going to read the pamphlet, we, I don't know, do we need to tweak that some different way? I don't know. And maybe it's just me. I, I, well, I understand what you're saying, and we're like in the middle we're of the forest. We're yeah. in the middle yeah. of the forest. So if you take a step back from it, everything else in the statement is talking about retaining teachers and how it contributes to the quality of the community, so on and so forth. Then out of the blue, it's here's the statement. It's critical so we can be competitive with other school districts. Yeah. I'm not a teacher, but if this was an essay that was being graded, could this we, would be a sentence that would not belong with this paragraph. Could we slide that sentence up and slot it in in front of word, the word currently? But that whole paragraph doesn't talk about competing with other districts. We're talking True. about our need, not our need to compete. It's our need here. So but it's it, two completely different thoughts. Well, it does talk about the fact that we, we're the only one around without this override. And that's definitely having a detrimental effect on it, our district. It, it does. It's, that's highlighting the point that we need this for us. But the whole gist of that paragraph it doesn't talk about how we're competing with surrounding districts. It's just you know, across the state, we're on the low end of compensation, not pay in order to steal teachers from another school district or keep students from going to another school district. We've got to do this. It's, that's, you know, why I said we're in the middle of this, so it makes sense to us, but for the person who's not sitting here, it's, a statement that just was thrown in there, kind of. Let's say that again. I don't know if we have a date we're still you know I think the pack is still kind of formally being organized but um, we've had it on cabinet's eyes the board has looked at it two times you know twice but it's not a, a bad suggestion like member Busby says we are kind of in the thick of it to get an outside perspective maybe we what we do I do feel that there is a need to to give urgency to this because, and I don't know how you want to wordsmith it, but we do want to say that Cave Creek is the only one without this, and because we're without it, we are not being able to compete with our neighbors. We said that in all those previous uh, uh, things that they said for the Excellence Committee, you know, they showed all the ways that we're not being able to compete, so this override is critical to, you know, keep up with our our neighboring districts okay. to be able to do that. I'm, I'm gonna be devil's advocate here. <laughs> I know what you're saying and, and I agree with you, but playing devil's advocate here, the guy who has no kids in this school district, he sees, oh, voted best in the North Valley for the last three years. Oh, they have graduated 95% of their students. They see all of these things that show that we're doing really doing good really fine. so then you come up and say oh we got to compete well why do you need to compete with them you're already you know doing so well so it's maybe the narrative instead of competing with the other districts it's competing well, with 
like the world. For well, it's true. I mean, but what are we competing for? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I see what you're saying there because, yeah, if you say it that way, then it's a, that's a whole different competition. But what we're saying here is yes. we need this override to compete to keeping then our good what teachers. We, we, we need to yeah. change this whole narrative to, exp in a concise way, explain that you know, we, we've lost X percent of teachers because of low compensation. They've, many have retired, but a lot have gone to surrounding districts. We're losing students because our class sizes are too big, or we're losing students because we don't have the, the program, we can't offer the programs or whatever. Then we're competing with the surrounding districts. But if we don't qualify it, that's just a statement that sort of got thrown in there. Mm -hmm. If we can, okay, start over. Yeah, well, <laughs> well so, let me, but, let me. But it becomes a choice of where are we going to get the biggest bang for our buck? Is it going to be more compelling to say we've got to compete against the, these districts? Or is it, hey, these teachers are, have been underpaid for this period of time and we need to have smaller classrooms and offer more programs so we can better educate these kids we can continue with the standard of excellence that we have let me uh yeah let me take a stab i think i can combine member busby's input member brown member fortney so second sentence first paragraph a yes vote will help retain and recruit the best teachers and staff through necessary pay increases this override is critical to compete with other districts as currently CCUSD teachers pay ranks in the bottom 15% of teachers salaries across the state. Yeah. Yes. So that's member Brown said, move the sentence up. And if we flow it together, it kind of gets at what member Busby and member Fortney, I think. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it's both points. It, it talks about teacher pay and it talks about th both of them are facts that we are under these constraints low pay and teachers can go to competing districts on our borders so both things are true well don't forget we'll also have 10 pro statements in the booklet with our with our statement at the beginning so somewhere in those 10 statements they'll also whoever writes those will have some chance to expand a little bit on on what yep. we're trying to say in our first 200 words exactly so we do have a little bit of backup for our point of view and again this isn't the last time we'll bring it we'll bring it at the next meeting when we'll ask for an approval so then you can maybe reread it to see if it's coherent and gets after what the board would like um, and again if there's other input board members feel free to input me and or uh, email it to me and marcy and i can continue to to massage it so we get what the board really wants and i think in, we're right there in yeah. the we're second paragraph yeah we're right the the word respectable class size is there a better word we could use than respectable <laughs> where is that where in the second paragraph in the oh there it is first, first sentence. sentence a yes vote will also provide funds to maintain respectable class sizes you say manage manageable, manageable? That's what i thought too manageable are yeah. we going to reduce class sizes we don't know that yet Hopefully, the plan would be to reduce. Our class sizes are pretty reasonable in a lot of areas. However, there are some areas where they could be reduced. So we want to just be really careful with what we say. Yeah, the only reason that I, I bring this up is because over the years, the push and pull that we've had with class sizes, there's a general feeling that Cave Creek believes that you know a class size of 30 kids is acceptable and so to say respectable that kind of is a huge gray area and the guy reading it well what's that supposed to be you know is that like 10 kids or are we talking 40 kids what about appropriate <clears throat> How about effective? You know, effective? Effective class size? Jeff and I both said manageable about the same time. Yeah. I mean, 
I would, def I would def I think manageable just more from a teacher perspective. But it's not, we're not talking to teachers, and that's yeah. where you got to take a step well, that's back. That's who's running these classrooms, though, and that's who's got to deal with these big class sizes. So, manageable, effective. Well, if we're talking about a quality education, I, effective or something, some other synonym, would play into a quality education. Mm -hmm. And effective isn't necessarily the correct word to use, but something along. Yeah, there's, it's tough because any of these words could be up, you know, manageable, appropriate, yeah. respectable. They all could be up for interpretation. Yeah. So just, you know, maintain, you know, and I would also take out the word also. A yes vote will provide funds to maintain. It could be a yes. Classroom sizes for effective teaching. Or just remove the adjective before class sizes. A yes vote will provide funds to maintain class sizes. Or put in a word there. Overall, our class sizes are pretty pretty good compared to our neighbors. However, like I said, there's some it's areas a, where they are higher. You know, maintain class sizes for effective teaching, which would kind of encompass the entire thing. How about to staff and learning, teaching about and to learning. About staff classrooms for effective teaching. <laughs> yeah. You're getting too wordy. You're going <laughs> to go over oh, your we 200. We've got some other words. <laughs> I like the for effective teaching. That's, I like that phrase. If we can get to, if we can get that many words. <laughs> can we add two more words? <laughs> Marcy, are you going to Word Doc right now? Where are we at? <laughs> we well, dropped again, one word. We again, we 12. can, Does yeah, we fit? can bring it back to the board one more time. And like, uh, last time we looked at the recording and the minutes of all the input that the board had and we tried to input it. So we can do the same thing again and bring a more polished version back. You could take out the A at the beginning of that second paragraph and put voting yes, so you reduce a word instead of a yes vote. Take out the. Uh, hey, I'm looking. We're yeah. trying to. You need to. Yeah, yeah, and take out both those also. This, this is the opposite of when I was in <laughs> high the second. You know, when I, was I know to do you tried to find everything right. that didn't say anything and, and drop the second also. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's take out like good. writing a college entrance essay because it can't be more than three hundred yeah, words. Exactly. And, and yet kids know how to play that game of the test. You know, for assignments to add more words, like you said. <laughs> So you guys have okay. those? <laughs> and here's the other thing is, we're talking about a school district. So a yes vote will provide funds to maintain some kind of class size and expand K-12 career technical and vocational opportunities for students. Isn't that sort of obvious? Who else are we going to provide these opportunities for? Yeah, you if can it's not, those words. If it's not for students, then who are we providing them for mm -hmm. that's two more words we saved see I can find some more places to <laughs> chop out words mm -hmm. yeah yeah career uh, nowadays that the terminology is career and technical however if you're over the age of 40, you know that word vocational. And so Marcy and I, we talked about really including that word. However, I would say what's what educational experts are really trying to push is that vocational, that word is now career and technical, but we wanted to add it because we think there's a more common understanding when people see vocation. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yes, and you'll see that in our FAQs as well. It'll, it'll say career, technical, and vocational. Are we good or? I think we're good. I think we're right there. As long as we didn't 
we're at 200, if we're at 201 words, we'll have to tweak a word somewhere, but I think we're going to be right on it. Put a couple of contractions in. We can find another word to drop out somewhere. Well, we look forward to seeing the next statement next month. All right, well done. Item 5.2, 2021-2022 year-end state of the district, presented by Dr. Court Monroe. President Hatcher, members of the board, um, I'm presenting here for the board and also for the public as a document, the year, uh, the state of the district, the year-end, um, the uh, everything that uh, is in black was part of the mid-year state of the district, and then throughout the four, five, six pages, you'll see the red, which is um, kind of some of the year-end um, state of the district. There's certainly a lot to celebrate, punctuated by our, our senior class accumulating almost $17 million in scholarship. As um, the board is finding out from various board updates and in a future presentation, um, our student achievement is uh, very, very proud of our teachers and our kids for the academic achievement that we're seeing on some of our exams this year. Um, and uh, there's a few there's a f obviously some areas where we want to improve all areas but overall the scores that we see trickling in um, illustrate that a lot of good things are happening in our classrooms from the elementary to the middle to the high school and so i uh, wanted to present this to the board it, it doesn't need to go to a vote um, so that we can see various of the thing uh, various things that we can celebrate from this year um, i'll be happy to answer or highlight anything on here that the board wants to talk about but I put this uh, in front of the board at this time. Did we know when we were going to get the official scores for the AASA? Is that coming up pretty soon? We have received most of them, Member Fortney. The scores, that's what um, uh, we'll be highlighting here. Uh, also, uh, in future presentation, there is, uh, I've been told, they're still embargoed or what have you, mm -hmm. so they haven't been released out to the public. Right. But within um, our staff and the, and the board will be privy to them, and they look, preliminary results look really, really good. Um, we're definitely in the upper echelon with our neighbors competing. In some areas, we're the highest. In other areas, we're very, we're very close. So we're making inroads, and, and this is the first time, you know, as we switch over to an assessment, you can generally expect a dip. However, we're on the high end of the dip. So um, again, I'm very, I'm very pleased with what, how hard our teachers have worked and how our kids are achieving. And as we've talked about before, uh, we believe in Cave Creek, the learning loss will be a lot less if there is such a thing, a learning loss. Um, we know there's a lot of social emotional things that have happened during the pandemic, but because this board decided to meet the needs of the community and open schools and bring kids back, um, I think we're seeing some of that reflected in some of our scores. When I read through a document like this, um, I, I am I'm not cease to be I don't cease to be amazed at what is accomplished for a small district with the constraints that we have. It's it's really impressive, and um, you know, uh, of course, it goes to the staff pretty much. The boots on the ground yes. is who does this. Um, so I, uh, you know, my hat off to the teachers and staff. Yeah, President Hatcher, there's been a lot of change as the board is very well aware. Lots of change, a lot of transition, and we still continue to transition. But I agree with you, I tip my hat to every staff member, teacher, everyone has an impact on what happens to our students in the classroom. And so um, again, if this is just the beginning, I'm very excited about next year and the year after because we're seeing good outcomes and this has nothing to do with me as the superintendent or our leadership, I agree. It's because of our principals, our directors, our teachers, our classified staff um, who make the difference, the boots on the ground day to day, who interact with our kids. I've got, uh, I've got a comment and a question. Um, on the first page, we list the the 21-22 Cactus Shadows Advanced Placement Passing Scores, well, we got, and this is just me and I'm sorry, This we capitalize Advanced Placement, but then if I, I go back to our um, override statement, we've got Advanced Placement in there, lowercase. So is that a proper program that should be capitalized? 
good good find i'll have to no that's a good find um sometimes programs get capitalized when they shouldn't be so let me let me look back because we want to have some continuity that's a good point because i know well because in the statement we've got international baccalaureate and that obviously is a proper program that we capitalize I, and i just caught that as i was reading through that so uh my question then on the second page the energy savings for water gas electrical uh, we've got the mid-year in the black ink we've got the the end of year in the red is that a cumulative then or should i add the two together a cumulative thank you very much anything else from anyone all right we'll move on Item 6.1, approval of district budget for 2022-2023, presented by Ms. Marcy Rodriguez. Thank you, President Hatcher, members of the board. This budget is uh, coming back to you this evening um, to adopt. So you were presented with the revised budget um, on June 14th. The Arizona Auditor General's Office has still issued these on preliminary budget forms. They have not released the final forms yet. As we know, the state just finalized an education budget a few days ago. So this is still on the preliminary forms. This is, does not reflect all of the changes that occurred during legislative um, session, but we are very close. So if you recall, when we, pro when we proposed the budget, um, we made some projections based on what we thought the legislature would finally come down to um, approving. And we were very close. Those, when those final forms come out um, and the governor has signed this into law, then we'll be in a position where we can come back and revise it to the actual numbers that were, um, were approved by the legislature. So I anticipate that revision will come back sometime in August um, or September when they get those forms. I would also like to um, present to the board the additional funds that were generated by the legislature and have a conversation, um, an information item, if you will, to discuss how we would like to allocate those additional funds. So that will be coming back in September, you'll have, a, or August. I think August is probably the sooner because I believe that we will have um, some staff that's anxious to see um, that whether they might get some of those funds or not. Um, so we will bring those back to you and have recommendations based on what we're projecting moving forward um, from the cabinet and then allow the board to have conversation and give us direction. So, the um, purpose of this is to adopt the budget. We will set the tax rate based on the adoption of the budget. Um, again, we are very close with what we are gonna actually revise to, so I have no concerns about us being in a shortfall um, cash position for property tax collection. Do you have a recommendation for us, Ms. Rodriguez? It's recommended the governing board approve the district budget for the 20. 22-2023 school year as presented. So moved. Second. The board have questions or comments? None? None? Okay. All right, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 6.1, approval of district budget for 2022-2023 as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Item 6.1 is approved as presented. So if we have something that we need to sign, Jill gave us a little slip um, after the meeting. Number seven, new business. 7.1, authorization to exceed M&O budgeted subsections for 2022-2023. Presented by Ms. Marcy Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. Members of the board. Background on this is there are certain expenditures that can create a situation where a subsection of the m and um, budget can be exceeded. And the subsections mean when you look at our budget, they're grouped in different categories. Um, the state law allows us to exceed, but we need governing board's authorization to be able to do that. 
So I move that the governing board approve the authorization to exceed subsections of the 2022-2023 maintenance and operation budget without exceeding the statutory budget limit in accordance with ARS 15905G as presented. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Ms. Rodriguez, can you give us a couple of, of examples of subsections that can be exempt? Yes, um, Madam President. If you uh, look at the budget and you see how the numbers are grouped, you would have a line with instruction on it. You would have a line with student support, a line with special education or transportation. So those are the subsections that we're looking at as far as the, the, the varying amounts. So sometimes when you budget, there may be additional expenses that you didn't plan for that could fall into one of those. Um, we always come back in May and revise the budget, and uh, best practice is to adjust then those subsections at that time. Thank you. Have you taken a, a stab at what may be an increase in food costs for lunchtime and transportation for fuel for the district vehicles? Have you tried to work maybe some increases in the budget that we maybe we wouldn't have seen prior years? Member Brown, I have not worked specifically in those areas. Uh, we were waiting for the additional funds to come from the state, and now we will take a look at projecting those. I'm waiting for final fuel numbers for this year. I want to see where we land, um, and then I can do a projection into next year f for those additional fuel costs. Okay, thank you. Yeah. President Hatcher, members of the board, it gets a little tricky. You know, I think we can have a more meaningful conversation when we bring it back in August or September. I'm really curious to see what other districts do because it's still really fresh and people are on vacation. And so districts are planning what they're doing with their increase. Remember, our increase may be close to $3 million. However, a larger district may be 10 to $20 million. So um, we want to be really careful and, and strategic and calculated because the timing of this, if you think about it, could hurt an override. Um, when we're talking about our teachers are underpaid, someone could refute and say, well, listen, there is just a big fat state budget signed, and why would we give you more money? So what Marcy and I need to work through is with some of this money, we're interested in obviously increasing our classified and certified staff salaries. We just want to make sure that it doesn't backfire with us because if you think about it logically, if other districts dedicate a lot of the money to staff salaries, we actually don't catch up. <laughs> we just keep that gap there. So you see it's a little it's a little sticky wicket. And um, so we want to be able to explain it real clearly and we'll probably put something in the FAQ um, once we make sense of it because someone could easily say, I read the newspaper and why do we need to vote and give you more money when you got a lot? And so, so Marcy and I have talked about it a lot since for, since Thursday, just about being very careful so it doesn't uh, backfire. Um, we believe uh, the passage of an override could really help us catch up and be a lot closer and a lot competitive. However, right now it's sort of like the high tide is raising all boats, and so we don't really close the gap, if you know what I mean. So, bringing it back in August, um, and I haven't talked to the other superintendents. I'm really curious to see what the other what the other districts are, are doing, you know, with, uh, with their budgets that they'll be getting. We are still a non-state aid district. So that's right. still, we're not getting really much of any money from the state. And that is correct. That, that needs to be communicated to the community. Yes. That, yeah, oh yeah, there was all this budget, but we're really not getting any. Yeah, and, and the trick is, uh, Member Fortney, is putting that in a very intelligible way in the FAQ because people will say, well, Scottsdale and Cave Creek, those are non-state aid district. Well, what does that mean exactly? So we need to break it down. So it's, again, it's very intelligible because someone might get their ballot and say, whoa, the school district's asking for more money? They just got a big fat budget that, you know, in July. So, yeah, we need to be real strategic how we explain that. But, but this budget, though, what the legislature passed, is not permanent, correct? It's just, isn't it just for the next fiscal year? Or, or am I wrong on that? Madam President, technically, yes, it's just for a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. 
So they're raising our base level. Um, hopefully they won't come back and reduce the base level, but we have seen in the past where they've left the base level there, but then they cut. So they don't touch the formula, but then they, they, they cut funding if we are um, in a recession or anything like that. So it's always a year-to-year -year budget. Yeah. And, and so the reason why I ask that question is because, to me, it, uh, I understand that the public may not get it. However, there, it's apples to oranges. You know, we're asking for, with the override, it's, it's an extended period of time. This is a one-shot deal. It can, it can get a little tricky, that sustainability. We always like to play the long game. And so, yeah, you give someone a nice raise right now, can we sustain that next year? Will, will the state give us that level again? Because there have been years when it's been reduced and we're kind of caught with our pants down. And people are like, wait, why, why am I making less all of a sudden? So that's why we need to put our heads together and really think long view sustainability. So it's not just kind of a one-year bump or because, uh, because again, we want to be really good <laughs> fiscal stewards, but we don't want to make empty promises um, to our employees. It, it, it's, it's similar to someone who's hired under a grant. We, we tell them right from the beginning, listen, your position exists as long as that grant is funded. Well, I would hate to do that <laughs> across the state and say, hey, you get this raise for a year, although our, we have contract language that says those kind of things. So we, we just want to be real strategic and, and be fair to our employees. And Ms. Hatcher, if I may, the, the, one of the concerns with the, um, the budget that was um, approved is that they put more burden on the state general fund. Um, and when we talk about sustainable funding source, um, having property taxes pay for education, from my perspective, is more of a sustainable funding source than the state general fund. Absolutely. So that, that there is a tax reduction um, that everybody will see on their property tax bill to the property owners. So I always look at that average home value of 582000 That That homeowner will pay $240 less a year because of that reduction. And they did not touch the qualifying tax rate. So our, our homeowners will still send money down to the state. So it doesn't solve our no, big problem, but our homeowners do benefit in that in that way. And uh, again, just to state the obvious, remember in January, we have different leaders in the seats. So we have redistricting that's happening. We'll have a new governor. Um, we're going to have, you know, the Arizona Department of Education will have a different superintendent of public instruction. And so so there's a lot up in up in the air. I think that's why you saw such a historic kind of compromise and things like that, because a lot of those legislators, they're termed out or they're not running again. An observation that I made when we're talking about this budget or the, what, the legislation that was just passed, you know, collectively, we, we're not competing with the, the other districts because it's apples and oranges. But in this pro statement, we're talking about competing with other districts. So you can't have it both ways. So just as kind of a food for thought here, what the narrative is going to be because you're going to have FAQs that refer to the legislation and how, well, we're not a state aid district, we're this, we're that, you know, we're not competing with them, but then you get our pro statement, well, we need this so we can compete with them. And you talk about confusing somebody, it looks like we're talking out of both sides of our mouth. So, well, and yeah. Member Busby, uh, that's what happens in elections. Well, we, I know. we have a lot of things we have to try to explain in an intelligible way, which is a challenge. And, well, and we're deciphering also now, you know, vouchers and how will those things impact our district. And um, now um, we need to study it more, but will we lose students? Because parents can take a voucher out to send their child to a private school that they didn't have to pay for before. And so there's gonna be a lot of budget implications oh, and sure. we'll have to figure out what our messaging is because the world is changing. 
You know what I mean? Well, the the educational world is changing. That's my point, is we have to be um, very mindful of what the narrative is because while we understand it, we've been sitting here and we deal with this frequently. For the average community member, it may not be as clear. So we just have to be very mindful of our word choice in the pro statement and in those FAQs. We can convey the message, but just we need to be mindful which words we're using? Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. Hearing uh, no more discussion, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 7.1. The authorization to exceed MO budgeted subsections for 2022 2023 is presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The motion carries. Item 7.1 is approved as presented. Item 7.2, human resource items, presented by Ms. Sheila Sorensen. Good evening, President Hatcher and members of the board. Um, you have in front of you this evening the um, HR report, the standard HR report, and I would recommend that the governing board approve the HR items as presented. So moved. Second. Questions? Comments? question on the the uh, all the little stipends the in-house subbing the summer extra D all that's being paid out currently as we speak to finish up the, the budget year correct yes member Brown um, all of these items are, are being paid out okay any other questions all right hearing oh, I heard, thought I heard a sigh Hearing none, it's been moved and seconded to approve item 7.2, human resource items as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Item 7.2 is approved as presented. All righty. Item 8.1, executive session, presented by me, Beth Hatcher, pursuant to ARS 38-431.03.A.1. I move that the governing board recess into executive session for discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, salaries, disciplining or resignation of a public officer, appointee or employee of any public body, except that, with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur at a public meeting. Our purpose is for the superintendent's summit of evaluation and discussion regarding performance-based pay. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We'll move into executive session. So that means everybody needs to leave and um, all recording needs to... It's running. Yes. Okay. All right. 9.1 reconvene work study special meeting in open session presented by me, Beth Hatcher. I move that the governing board reconvene the work study special meeting in open session. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. We are reconvened in open session. Number 10, item 10.1. Approval of an award of performance-based pay for the superintendent pursuant to ARS section 15-341A39 uh, for the benefit of the public, even though we don't have visual public here. I'm going to read the public content portion to give context. President Hatcher, before you begin with that, do we need to vote to extend the meeting? Because yeah. oh, we're up yeah, against, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yes. up against yes. time. Yes, okay. that's exactly what we need to do. Okay, is there a motion to extend the meeting past nine? So moved. Second. 
Okay, it's been moved and seconded to extend the meeting past nine. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. We will go past nine. Yeah, thank you. All right, 10.1. Pursuant to ARS section 15-341A39 and the superintendent's contract, the governing board has the opportunity to assess the performance of the superintendent and award perform performance-based pay as follows. The governing board shall assess superintendent's performance on an annual basis to determine whether to award the superintendent any performance-based pay. Such assessment shall occur in conjunction with the superintendent's evaluation. The governing board shall review the goals listed for the superintendent in the superintendent's evaluation and substantial progress towards meeting the agreed upon goals of the district in making that determination. The governing board shall evaluate the superintendent and assess any award of performance-based pay for the superintendent no later than June 30th of each contract year. If a majority of the board members present in conducting the performance assessment agree that the superintendent has earned performance-based pay, then they shall vote to issue some or all of his performance-based base pay subject to availability of funds. Under the superintendent's contract of employment, the board may award up to 10% of the superintendent's base pay. Any award would be in addition to the superintendent's base salary. So, is there a motion to approve item 10.1 as presented? So moved. Sorry, let me back up a minute. So the um, recommendation is 10% in dollars. That is 15,763.50 cents. So that's the recommendation. So let me back it up. Is there a motion to approve that as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Comments? I, um, well, I'll just go first here. Uh, I think that the 10% is an is a equitable amount. Uh, considering what Dr. Monroe has done over the last uh, year, uh, he is, uh, I'm really impressed with what he's been doing. I see it in, in his actions and I see it in the strategic plan. I see it in uh, the way that this was uh, just gone through. Um, and, you know, it's compared to other districts, it's not as much as other districts might be doing. So I think that uh, he has definitely earned uh, this 10% this performance pay. I, I concur. Um, we are, the parameters for us is based on goals. Um, did the superintendent um, demonstrate substantial progress towards meeting the goals? And, and so that's the criteria. That's the legal criteria that we're given. I, I do want to ask Ms. Rodriguez though, because there's one other thing that it's subject to availability of funds. So I want to make sure the funds are available before um, President Hatcher, members of the board, yes, we have availability of funds. Um, those funds are set aside every year in the event that the governing board should choose to approve performance pay. Okay, thank you. The other thing that I would like to bring up is that per law, the law gives the uh, governing board the ability to award up to 20%. Um, our board has uh, inserted in the contract 10%. So um, we are already 50% lower than what the law actually allows. Uh, so, f and I'm not gonna reiterate what Jeff said. Uh, I think he's clearly met his goals. Um, so I, I am in favor of this.
Any other comments? Well done. I I'm think good. you... I mean, I think even no connection to the school district, just what you've poured into the community has been eminent, um, which I think is important with what we're trying to do. So thank you. This is a situation where I, re I struggle because I know that Dr. Monroe, you've worked really hard and change is always very difficult and sometimes it feels like you're trying to move the Titanic. Um, and you know, that's, that's very admirable and worthy. But I also sit here and you know, sitting right here is this pro statement, you know, we need to pass this override so that we can bump up teacher pay. And we're gonna go out to our community and ask them to support that. But, you know, we're also sitting here contemplating, should we give this individual a 10% bonus when we're trying to tell the community we don't have money to pay our teachers? And we've just given everybody, including the superintendent, a 3% increase to their salary. And so I sit here and I'm struggling with this because I really don't know what the right answer is. And it's, it's difficult because on the one hand, it's, it's a deserved bonus, but the flip side to that is once this, if it passes, then what is that, what's the community's reaction to that, especially when we're gonna go out and say, we don't have enough money to pay our teachers what they should be paid but we have enough money to give the superintendent a bonus. And so that is an, a narrative that is gonna translate really well. well. I think that's kind of the the nature of the beast. I mean, we have a, a superintendent is a, a, a very unique position. And so there's, that has to be there has to be a way to compartmentalize the two. I mean, I understand what you're saying about the the funds and being there, but uh, this is this is part of what happens, and we have to do that. We we have to keep uh, making sure that the superintendent is rewarded because you know we saw before that you know superintendents are leaving in droves sometimes, and good ones are hard to find. We have somebody that's doing the job well, and so we need to do what we can to maintain that. Uh, we've had it for a year and a half, year and a half, and uh, so we need to, the progress is there. The district is going in the direction that we want it to go in, so then it has to be uh, addressed accordingly. And I think saying with that, we know that those funds are available they're written into it as uh, Marcy said so it's not like well we're taking it from the teachers you know teachers would have got a lot more if we weren't doing this this is something that it's two different things no, I, I understand it's so, two I, I understand you. that it's two different things and I'm, I'm if I made it sound like it's one in the same I apologize for that my point is how it will be received by our community, number one. You know, historically, this district, when it's awarded a bonus to the superintendent, it's always been 10%. We're in a situation now where we are going basically pleading and begging to our community, please help us, we need to pay our staff more. If this bonus was something less than 10%, it would be, I think, better received. I'm not saying that it's not deserved because it is, but there are lots of moving parts here as we've identified throughout this meeting. And, you know, an immediate 
gratification, I'm looking at long term. You know, where where are we going and how is our best how are we best suited to get there? And you know, it, playing devil's advocate, we give the superintendent a 10% bonus, we don't pass this override and then the superintendent leaves. So then what do we do? I don't know, but so we we've, we've we're this is an investment. Now are we willing to you know the contractually we've you know the maximum we can do is 10%. So are we willing to you know go the maximum given what we're going to ask our community for and say, you know, we've given him a bonus after he was here for six months. We're going to give him another bonus. So in 18 months, he's gotten two bonuses and a pay increase. That was per their hiring contract. Well, I, I understand that. But what I'm talking about is this is what our community sees. Well, there's always going to be that faction. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that. We've seen that every single time something comes up. There's some certain member of you know the social media that wants to rip everything to shreds, and so this they'll do it again, and that's fine. Uh, they won't listen to any reason anyway, so you can't really go out there and try and change somebody's mind. But you can put out there that our current superintendent is still getting paid less than a lot of what the other superintendents are getting paid, and. Uh, the direction is what it is and so we have to try and do what we need to do to say that and you, you know to worry you know I get it I get what you're saying but you know the the people that are going to rip it are going to rip it no matter what so uh, I mean they were doing that before with you know you know renewing his contract so what they you know that's what that's what some people do that's what they enjoy doing so you can't you can't worry about that you have to do what's best for the district this is what's best for the district and hopefully yes the override uh, if we do what needs to be done for that then that will take care of itself but it's going to take an effort and I hope everybody puts in the effort to get that thing to pass that's what I got to say about that I, I also feel like it's the right thing to do f for myself to honor the contract um, I don't think it speaks very well to as employees to not honor the contract if the individual has met the requirements. So uh, that's, that's another thing I could say about this particular thing. If, if we were giving a, um, an award, I can't remember the district where that superintendent got tens of thousands of dollars and they went nuts rightfully so just recently here in Arizona uh, I, I could see you you know worrying about the public tar and feathering me or tar and feathering the bird the the board but uh, not in this case Any other comments? I'm also like Janet. Um, I kind of struggle with the optics of it. And yes, there was a lot of a lot of uh, verbiage in April when the contract extension came up, and how that was approved. Excuse me, was approved by the board. Uh, that the new contract, which starts July 1st, with a, a raise up to his base salary and some other increases uh, that was built into the new contract with the extension. I didn't like that. I didn't like the timing of that. I wish maybe we could have waited to do the extension now after the evaluation. Um, not saying that it would or wouldn't have passed. I just think it would have been, uh, would have looked better that we were doing our part with the proper evaluation before the extension was offered. 
it's tough because um, we are asking our our community for financial help, and I know it won't play well with some people in the community, like Member Fortney has said, and we'll need to be positive when those comments come out, whether it's social media or face-to-face -face when we see people out in the community. Is there a way, and I'm trying to maybe save some face here, is, is there a way that instead of 10%, we could go to 7% that, to help uh, still show that, yes, there was a basis for the performance pay for the bonus, but we know that we're in a bit of a financial stretch here that maybe, you know, yes, we'd like to give him the 10%, but maybe, you know, financially, maybe to help our district out in the short term, only offer the 7%, which is still, you know, a, a nice piece for the bonus. Knowing that in two weeks, his new contract starts, and he gets the increase of his base salary kicks in with the new contract. I I I don't I don't know how else to explain it. It's um, it's nothing. I just think we we jammed ourselves up. I think with the contract extension in April, and I guess it is what it is. At a two percent increase for three years that's better than current inflation right now I, i'm having i have a difficulty i'm struggling with um everyone's concern of optics when we are the optics i mean we're the elected officials we're the governing board and our response can change that optics instantly i mean i think this is pretty black and white for me since we do have a contract and the funds are set aside as part of the budget for this. So I hear where you're coming from, but I also think that's where we step into our role as we are the optics. We're, elect we're the elected officials of our community. Well, if we're stepping into our role as the elected officials, we are in a financial crisis at this point offering 10% or suggesting or voting on a 10% bonus, it does not seem like it's prudent. If it was something less than that, it is acknowledging that the, the job done met the expectation, but it also acknowledges the fact that we are in a financial crisis at this point offering the full 10 percent which is in the contract it's up to a maximum of 10 percent it is irresponsible i don't think it's irresponsible because what we've all agreed on is that i mean you said he's earned it if if uh if somebody is doing their job to the level that they have earned something, then they then they should get it. I mean, I, I understand. I understand that, but here it seems, it just seems pretty clear to me uh, that if a person that is doing what needs to be done for our district and getting the district where it needs to be and doing the things that need to be done for the district is doing it, and we all agree that he's doing it to that level, than saying, well, yeah, but we're only going to give you 70% instead of 100%. That's like, that's like a C instead of an A. Um, I, don't, I don't agree. I think that in this case, we're making a strong statement that's saying that this is the guy that we are saying is leading us in the right direction and we need to continue leading in that direction so we need to make sure that that's what we're doing here so that's that's just my my opinion on this thing and so it is the responsible thing to do i i feel the same way i i thought this could possibly come up um and so um 
I've thought about it and you know, I don't want to reiterate what I've already said because I have thought about it and I, I stand on what I said before. Um, $15,000 is a lot of money, but if you break it down over a year and, and divide it up, it's not going to make or break the district. It's not going to come close to making or breaking the district. Um, so I, I think it's the right thing to do. It, it's business, you know, as harsh as that may sound, it, it's business. And uh, if the district were in the red, that's one thing. I, if the district were in the red, I would hope that Dr. Monroe wouldn't expect for us to give him a dime more. But that's not the case. Um, it's just not the case. So are, are we all are we all standing on our positions pretty much? Why don't you call for the vote? Okay. Uh, is there a motion? Oh, oh, sorry, we got the motion. Um, it has been moved and seconded to approve item 10.1, recommendation of the performance-based pay in the amount of 10%. Fifteen thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars and fifty cents. Um, I vote aye. We'll do a roll call vote. I vote aye. I going next. You can if you like. <laughs> uh, I'll vote aye. Aye. I'm a no. Um, it, it pains me, but I have to say no. Okay, uh, the motion carries. Um, the superintendent is awarded the 10% of pay for performance. Um, item 11, adjournment 11.1. .1. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Is, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned.